Welcome back friends. Today we're gonna to make as many charcuterie boards as we possibly can. It won't be that many, as many as we can possibly make with the limited lumber we have. Roll the intro. Yes. We're Jenny and Davis. We fly through hurricanes for research and build furniture for fun. A while ago, we came up with a business plan to sell quality furniture, which brings people together. Follow along as we build our business empire. Empire? Yes, Jenny, big goals. Okay, we're starting an empire. Maybe one day it'll span beyond the garage. This week we were trying to build charcuterie boards at scale. And it's kind of a lot like the cutting boards. We really just wanted to get a process figured out so that we can build a lot of these charcuterie boards, but make sure we're saving ourselves as much time as possible. So we sat down to write out the entire process and the steps in which we were gonna do everything. And then we realized the only sticking point was that we didn't really have a repeatable way to make all of these handles, like to make them all the exact same each time. If you had watched some of our previous videos, we built a hundred of these serving boards previously, and that just wasn't gonna work for us. They looked kind of funky. And then we prototyped three new handle designs. And even after that, we're still realizing that we don't have a method to make each handle very repeatable. So we chose one handle design that we were gonna stick with and try to make that repeatable. We picked whatever one was most popular on Pinterest, because. Obviously that one would work well for us right out of the gate. We just needed something to start out building our processes with. We had to figure out how to make that specific design repeatable. So we did what we always do and we went to the internet and started researching how other people have solved this problem. We searched and searched and searched and the only solution that we could find that we were watching other woodworking shops doing, other makers uh, and content creators doing, was that they were making like MDF templates and then just template routing those out on the ends of the boards. We looked at all the stuff, we found the best double stick tape, we found the best router bit and we had an Amazon shopping cart like ready to go and we liked that idea but it was going to be very time consuming because that means for every board, you're gonna have to tear off double stick tape, put it on both sides, draw it out, route it out. There's just a lot of potential for error because you could cut that in the bandsaw and then your template is ruined. So we'd have to have a stack of templates. Like it seemed like it was gonna be a really sloppy method. And I thought, what if there was a way to reuse the same template without using tape? Is there a way that we could attach the template to each board without having to use double stick tape and using it on the bandsaw um, or attaching and reattaching it several times? And so I just imagined some sort of a sled that had the handle template on it and you just clamp the board down to the template, did your little thing on the router and then unclamped it. And I searched and searched and searched and I could not find anybody that had made a sled like this before. So we just kind of got on the whiteboard and drew out what we wanted and said, you know what, it's worth half a day to see if this idea works. And this is what we made. It looks like a giant spidey. So this thick boy right here is uh, just a patterning bit. It's got the bearing on the bottom. These bits are very expensive. What was this one, like 175? Yeah. 175, whatever, it's chump change. It'll all come out in the wash. So we got the drill press and it came in this massive box and then this bit came in this itty bitty container and Davis goes, which one would you think costs more money? And cause the drill press is like literally $85 and this bit is like twice that. Anyways. And we couldn't believe that it 
worked. I mean, it's not perfect. There's definitely some improvements that need to be made on it, but it worked. So that's what we used to build 20 boards, just so we could get a little bit ahead on inventory. Hey, real quick, you guys did an outstanding job helping us improve our process for our cutting boards. And we're gonna ask you to do the same thing here on this video. If you see anything weird with our process or somewhere that we could save time with our charcuterie boards, again, we're not trying to make a better product, we're trying to make a faster product. So we're not lowering the quality, but we wanna make it faster. So if you got any speed suggestions, please leave them in the comments below. We've already written some of your suggestions into our workflow for our cutting boards. Really excited to share those with you coming up, but uh, yeah. Interested to hear your thoughts below on these charcuterie sure boards. Okay, bye. So this is one of those days where um, can't believe this is our job. What do you have to say, Jenny? That's it. Yeah. So we just got done making a charcuterie board, so we a could take Christmas some Christmas charcuterie board. Basically, we're making. Um, like inserts or flyers and we have like recipes on there for each season. Yes, yeah, so we just wanted some pictures of what it looks like when they're all completed. Turned out great, uh, but now we're getting to enjoy some charcuterie. <laughs> Yay! In the middle of the afternoon, so. <laughs> Cheers to that. I'm gonna go edit some footage. <laughs> and I'm gonna clean all of this up. So we ended up making 20 boards today and we're super excited about them. We love how they turned out. We like this handle and the template so much better. This version is good enough to sell, but this isn't our final version. So internally, we're really happy because we got a template that works, but it's not finished. It's definitely not finished. It's good enough to get us some boards to get started. Like these boards are definitely good enough, but it's still not perfectly optimized. This template causes there to be pretty bad burn marks in the corners of the handle, so that requires a little bit more time to sand them out. The handle on the template is a little wavy. It's not exactly perfectly straight. So again, more time sanding, which is what I mean when I say it's not perfectly optimized, but it's good enough for now and it'll work. So as backwards as it sounds, this iterative process of trying something again and always creating a better version of it as you go on is actually gonna help us more in the long run. We're improving as we go, but we're also selling and making money at the same time. We're not stopping dead in our tracks because we didn't create the most perfect template right out of the gate. So basically what we're saying is like, don't waste time or money or sales because you didn't create the most perfect 100% ideal version right out of the gate. Accept the fact that you're gonna get better, that you're gonna continue to build something better and better and better as the years go on. And as you go, you're making sales to fund the process of improving. Lower your standard for what's good enough the first time around and then schedule time to come back and improve it later. So if you wanna hear us talk more about this process of iteration, that's the topic we covered in the podcast this week. It'll come out Wednesday, and we really dig deep on what we mean by this process of iteration and why we know it's so valuable. So thanks so much for watching and following along as we start building this business in the Houston area. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss any of our videos, and uh, thanks for watching.